So let's now take a look at the actual system so you can see how it will work for you or your potential customers or partners. So with Itemit, you get a web portal and you also get iOS and Android um, apps and the solution is cloud-based and all updates in real time. So here we can see the web portal and as you can see down the middle here you have your asset list or your asset register and it's here that we see all of the assets that we're managing. On the right hand side we have what we call the profile page for each of those different assets. Every asset in Itemit is unique and has its own digital profile page where you can store, view and update all of the information you need to know about that asset. And as we've already seen, Itemit is being used to track a really wide variety of different types of assets. There are no restrictions in the system as to what type of asset you can track and the system is designed to be flexible enough to let you track any asset. So if we click through to one of our assets and then we can see its profile page in full, and we can see more of the features that are available to us to make the management and tracking of these assets really simple and to give us one safe place to store all of the information that us or our colleagues need to know about these assets now and also into the future. So if we have a look over here, we have a way to um, assign assets to different users. So uh, really commonly used for IT assets um, and assets that are given to people for the duration of their employment. So we can pick a user from our list and assign that asset to them. So that means that anybody that now looks at this assets profile page on, on this web portal and anybody that also comes across that asset and scans its tag will be able to see who it belongs to. A little bit further down, we have a way to book assets, so to reserve them in advance. So you enter in here an expected return date. We can then choose who we're booking them to, and we can also add in some more assets to our booking if we need to. So we can go ahead and create that booking in here, which means that anybody that needs this asset for a particular period of time has the reassurance that that asset is going to be available for them to use. Up here, we have what we call collections, which are just folders or categories to categorize your assets. So this is most commonly used for determining asset type and being able to pull off reports on these different collections to see how many of each um, asset type you might have um, and just to group those assets so that whenever you look at a profile page, you can see which um, asset type it belongs to. Next, we have an issues ticketing system uh, or that's also built in uh, to Itemit as standard. So you can go ahead and add in an issue here. So we can report that an asset is say broken and we can also upload a photo um, of any damage or an error code, anything that we've got to obviously support that issue, we can upload here as well. So as you can see, that issue is now reported against this unique asset and every asset in item is considered unique. So we know exactly which asset has this problem and it gives full transparency to us and all of our um, you know, colleagues that are also interacting with these assets because anybody that now comes across this asset and scans its tag is going to see um, any outstanding issues on the asset. So obviously they can make a decision as to whether that's still suitable for their needs or not. Next, we have the reminders and information section. So reminders is really commonly used um, for warranty expiries, inspection, maintenance due dates, pack testing, um, and anything that you just want to be reminded of to do with your assets. The information section is really flexible and lets you add in different types of information in here, most commonly used for make, manufacturer and model. The next section we've got is the location section, which has two different types of locations, as you can see in here. So we have the first one, we call it the last seen location. And all that means is that this is uh, the location and, and kind of the time and date stamp of when that asset was scanned. So no matter which tagging technology you're using, every time the tag is scanned, this is automatically recorded in the background. So we can see you know, which reader or which person scanned it um, and the time and date of that scan as well. The second location option we have is here. And as you can see, we can see that this asset is recorded as being in the operating theater. So what does that really mean? So if we go to this location section at the top, we can see our location hierarchies in here. So these are all custom and built obviously to be in line with your own locations or sites or buildings. Um, and you can have multiple levels in here as well. You can go ahead and create a new location and have uh, sub levels within each of these as well. So this then means that you can see where assets are, how many of a different, uh, a certain type of asset you have in each of your locations, um, and lots of other things as well. So if we head back to the profile page, 
And we can see here that this asset is currently located in the operating theater. We've then got uh, over on this side, we can see how the asset is tagged. We have a way of um, tracking straight line depreciation for this asset, as well as a replacement value, uh, a comment section and a history section, which records for us everything that has happened to this asset. So it gives us a complete audit trail and lets us see who's had what um, and what they've done to it in that time. So if we just have a little um, look back at the tag section. So uniquely, Itemit allows you to choose the best way to tag your assets. And this can even vary by asset. So you can choose between barcodes, QR codes, GPS trackers and RFID tags. It may be this, in, the, in your case, not all assets warrant a GPS tracker or perhaps an RFID tag. And you may wish to combine the technologies, which you can absolutely do um, in the system. So you can just pick whichever tag suits that asset best. So the main benefit of this is that all of your assets are still logged and tracked using one easy to use system rather than having separate tracking systems for your RFID tagged assets um, and then your barcode tagged assets being tracked in another system. So over here, we've got on our users page, the way that you manage um, and kind of control all your user accesses. So Itemic really is at its best when you invite your colleagues to join your account too, and you've got full control over what they um, have access to. So we can share the whole workspace and we can also choose to share just a subset of assets based on a particular location or even based on a particular item type. we take a quick look at the reports page, we'll see that this is effectively um, an Excel file. And you have all of the filters box down the side here, which let you filter by all the different properties that you might have in item. So for example, we had an inspection date on our asset. And if we want to pull off a report for everything that has an inspection, say this month, then we can go ahead and pull off that report and it's going to return to us a list of all of those assets that are due for inspection this month. And I can go ahead and export this to an Excel file um, if I want to do so. So it's really powerful because you can have any combination of filters in here. And because this pulls in all of your custom properties, um, the reporting, I mean, it's the possibilities are endless, really, in terms of the, the different reports that you can pull off. So just to recap, Itemit is a complete asset tracking and management solution that allows you to firstly know what assets you have, where they are, what condition they're in, and a lot more than just that. Secondly, it gives you the option to combine and choose between QR codes, barcodes, GPS trackers, and RFID. And finally, it gives you the, op the possibility to manage these assets in real time. So I'll now hand you over to my colleague Lewis, who will run through the fixed RFID solution within Itemir. Um, and he'll run through not only how to manage your assets using fixed RFID readers, but also how to monitor and configure the RFID readers themselves too. Thank you, Charlotte. So what I want to do now is show you the RFID solution in action. To do this, we're simply going to add a new reader into Itemit. We're going to assign it to a location and we're going to see how item automatically updates the location of your assets based on the RFID reader, which reads a particular tag. To do that, to set the scene a little bit, we have an existing reader added into item, it, which is currently assigned to the operating theater. If you take note of its device name, you'll see that it ends in one, two, three, four. If I go to the reports page where I have a saved report, I can see that my five assets here are indeed assigned to the operating theater and they were last seen by the reader that we just saw added into Itemit already. If I click one of these devices, I can see the same information on the profile here, location last seen by this particular reader. And importantly, they all have an RFID tag associated and each of these RFID tags is unique to the item. Going back to the devices page, the first thing we'll do is add our new device into Itemit. Our RFID reader, which we're using today, is identified by this, ending in 4F5. So if I add this, I can see that it becomes available within my devices list. What I can do now is assign this particular reader to a location. In this case, it's in the storage location. So I add that, and this reader is now configured to the storage location. What this means is that whenever this reader reads an asset tag associated to one of our items, it will assign that item to storage. If this reader reads a tag associated with one of the items which I just showed you, 
then it will be assigned to the operating theatre. Clicking this reader here, we can see that there are also a number of configuration options available to us. All of these are provided to us through Zebra's Cloud Connect API. And to briefly run through some of the options we have, they are mainly split into two particular features. One is monitoring your reader and one is configuring your reader. So monitoring your reader is important because it allows you to see whether there are any on-site issues, whether that is network failure or cables unplugged or simply some other issue, meaning that your reader cannot read tags at this given time. We have uptime of the reader, the number of connected antenna, which can help identify any cabling issues you might have, and the last activity of the reader, which signifies when this reader last read a tag. If this time is too long, or we think that perhaps your reader isn't reading tags effectively, this status will change to amber. Otherwise, the reader will be green, meaning that it's reading OK, or red, meaning that the reader is currently offline. In terms of configuration, there are a number of things you can do here as well. You can start and stop the reader from reading. If it's stopped, then it won't send any tag detections into itemit. If it's started, then it will. You can identify the reader, which blinks some lights on the reader simply to help identify your physical reader wherever it may be installed. You can reboot your reader. You can update the firmware of your reader should there be a firmware upgrade available to you. You can, of course, assign a location to your reader, which can change whenever you need it to. And you can change the mechanism by which the reader sends tag reads to our system through one of these options here. There's also an audit trail, which helps an administrator to identify what actions have been taken to this reader and at what time. That's pretty much it for an item for a device profile here. So if I close this now, we should be able to see by going to my reports page, RFID demo, we can indeed see that the four items which have been moved to the storage facility, these two here and the two at the bottom, have been read by the reader here, 4F5, and assigned to our storage facility. We can see that this, re this item here, which is not in the storage, but remains in the operating theater, has not been moved. Again, by clicking one of these, we can see that on the item profile, it has indeed been seen just now move and moved here. So effectively, what that means is that by assigning a new reader to our account and configuring it to point to a particular location, without any kind of manual intervention, just simply by the reader picking up an RFID tag within item, it, it can assign items to a location for you completely seamlessly, meaning that there's no need for any kind of on-site intervention whatsoever. And that is pretty much it for the RFID solution of item. It. Hopefully that's informative and thank you very much for listening.